Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Over the year, I have brought you information on how HIV infects the body and also spoken about our immune system. In fact, I've made a series which talks about human immune system, how it develops the various components, etc., which are all foundational information for understanding how HIV works and how various HIV therapies attempt to control and cure the disease. I have seen many comments lamenting why it has taken so long and yet we don't have a cure for HIV. I've also heard conspiracy theories in our comment section that a cure is deliberately delayed so that companies can make money selling ART. That is why today I'm going to provide a summary of how the HIV virus enters specific immune cells such as CD4 T cells, which are helper T cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. I will also provide you information about the various strategies adopted by therapies existing and in clinical trials to interrupt this process at each and every stage. This process is quite intricate and involves a series of steps. I'm going to simplify it for you and I'm going to break it down for you. But before we proceed, I have a request to make. First, if you have not yet subscribed and had been watching our videos, please subscribe as it's absolutely free and we are close to 5,000 subscribers and your subscription could push us to 5,000 and that would be great. Next, we have had over a year of uh, HIV uh, specific videos that all of you have enjoyed. I request that it is now time for you to step up your engagement with the channel by pressing the join button and becoming a member of our YouTube channel or use the link in the description to become a Patreon. This will help keep the HIV programs going on in the channel to bring you the latest and fundamental knowledge on this topic. You can also visit our website, sharetrek.com. So based on the funding that I got from the initial members and Patreons, uh, I have got us a website which is called sharetrek.com and it has got a lot of blog posts from me with regard to genomic medicine as well as HIV therapies and fundamentals. You can also follow me on Instagram and threads. So let us intensify our engagement and let us make this a movement for knowledge. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. HIV or the human immunodeficiency virus is a retrovirus with a particular affinity for immune cells. Two critical types of immune cells targeted by HIV are CD4 T cells, often referred to as helper T cells, and macrophages. These cells are central players in our human immune defense system. Let's talk about CD4 receptors and the initial attachment. HIV's outer envelope features glycoproteins, mainly GP120 and GP41. I also refer to this as the trimer, which are pivotal for the virus's uh, interaction with the host cells. The initial step of HIV entry involves the binding of the viral GP120 glycoprotein to CD4 receptors found on the surface of immune cells. These CD4 receptors are present on CD4 T cells and on macrophages and also on dendritic cells among other immune cells. Co-receptor binding is the next concept you have to understand. While GP120's interaction with CD4 is critical, it is not the sole det uh, determinant of uh, cell entry uh, for HIV. HIV also requires co-receptors to gain entry into the host cell. The specific co-receptor utilized depends on other factors like the viral strain, which strain of HIV is being uh, at work, and the stage of infection. This topic warrants a separate video altogether because in the initial stage, uh, HIV uses CCR5 co-receptor. At the later stage, it uses CXCR4 co-receptor. And there are various other methodologies used by various other strains of HIV. So that's a separate topic for a separate video. It's uh, very uh, intensive, so we won't talk about that right now. Let's go on to the next category of cell that HIV infects, which are macrophages. Macro macrophages are known for expressing the CCR5 co-receptor prominently making them susceptible to infection by r tropic HIV strains that employ CCR5 for cellular entry. 
let's talk about the fusion of viral envelope. Once the viral GP120 protein builds to both uh, CD4 and the appropriate co-receptor, which is CCR5 for macrophages, it initiates significant changes uh, in the viral envelope proteins. These structural alterations expose the GP41 protein, which is a crucial facilitator for the fusion between the viral envelope and the host cell's membrane. I think of it more like a drop of acid, which can make a hole on metal. Uh, so that's how I view it. Uh, you can kind of visualize it that way. So once the GP41 protein is uh, exposed, uh, it can make a, a dent on the cell membrane and the fusion event allows the genetic material and the content of the virus to enter the host cell. And let's talk about reverse transcription and integration, which is the next step that happens once the RNA gets into the host cell. Within the host cell, the viral RNA undergoes transformation into DNA thanks to the activity of a viral uh, enzyme known as reverse transcriptase. Subsequently, this newly synthesized viral DNA uh, it becomes integrated into the host cell's genome, a process that depends on the viral enzyme uh, integrase. So let's talk about integrase inhibitors and HIV integration because this is one step at which therapies try to block the progression of HIV. At this stage, we must introduce a critical aspect of HIV, HIV therapy, uh, which is the integrase inhibitors, such as uh, raltegravir and um, uh, doltegravir. These are um, two examples of um, uh, inhibitors, integrase inhibitors, which interfere with the activity of integrase, preventing the viral DNA from integrating into the host cell's uh, genome. By doing so, they disrupt this crucial stage of HIV propagation and help to control the inf uh, infection. Let's talk about replication and spread, which is the next stage. If there is a successful uh, uh, integration, then whenever the infected cell uh, multiplies, uh, the, the viral DNA is going to be replicated along with the uh, original uh, cell. Once integrated, the viral DNA becomes a permanent fixture within the host cell's uh, genetic material. Integrated uh, viral DNA can remain latent, essentially hiding with the host cell or it can become active, prompting the production of new viral particles. These newly generated viruses can then proceed to infect other immune cells, such as CD4 T cells and macrophages, perpetuating the infection and the cycle continues. Over time, this continuous cycle of virus replication weakens the immune system, uh, culminating in the uh, immune deficiency characteristics of the HIV or AIDS uh, virus. Let's talk about um, infection of macrophages, which is the other aspect which we have not talked about much in this channel, but I'm bringing it more and more into our discussion because macrophages are part of the dormant pool uh, that we talk about and macrophages are present all over the body, including the brain. So macrophages are known uh, to express both CD4 receptors and quite frequently the CCR5 co-receptor. This co-receptor expression renders them susceptible to infection by R5 tropic HIV strains. It's important to note that not all macrophages are equally susceptible to HIV infection as susceptibility can be influenced by factors like the viral strain and the host's immune response. Let's talk about dendritic cells and co-receptor expression as well because dendritic cells also are a distinct type of immune cell and are also susceptible to HIV infection. These cells have capacity to express both CCR5 and CXCR4 co-receptor, but their expressions can vary depending on several factors. Let's talk about the entry inhibitors and co-receptor binding. This is another strategy which is being used by various therapies. Some antiretroviral drugs called uh, entry inhibitors target this specific step. For example, Maraviroc is a CCR5 antagonist that inhibits the interaction between CCR5 and the virus, thereby preventing viral entry into certain immune cells like macrophages. This disruption at the entry stage is vital in controlling HIV infection. Let's talk about variable co-receptor expression. Expression levels of CCR5 and CXCR4 co-receptors on dendritic cells are not fixed. They can fluctuate depending on various circumstances. For instance, the activation state of dendritic cell 
has their specific location within the body and the presence of in inflammatory signals can all influence co-receptor expressions. Some dendritic cells may simultaneously express CCR5 and CXCR4 co-receptors, broadening their susceptibility to HIV strains. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about dendritic cells' role in HIV transmissions because dendritic cells have a crucial role in the transmission of HIV from mucosal surfaces to lymph nodes. They can capture the virus or at mucosal sites like the genitalia genital or rectal mucosa using specialized structures called dendrites. After capturing the virus, dendritic cells transport to the lymph nodes. In the lymph nodes, dendritic cells interact with CD4 T cells, uh, facilitating the transfer of HIV from the dendritic cells to the uh, CD4 T cells initiating infection. In summary, the process of HIV entering immune cells is intricate involving specific receptors and co-receptors. A detailed understanding of this process is essential for grasping how the virus establishes infection and its impact on the immune system. Incorporating therapies like the integrase inhibitors and entry inhibitors into our discussion underscores the importance of targeting specific stages of HIV propagation in our efforts to combat the virus effectively. The HIV infection is low in uh, many parts of the world, mainly because of ART. It's not that responsible behavior has uh, come into place. It's not there yet, and uh, I think that's one important behavioral change that needs to happen, and it's very difficult to happen. But that's not all. Once uh, the infection takes place, for example, macrophages and some CD4 cells can uh, keep the virus dormant for a long period of time, as long as ART is in effect, and then it can come back again, which is what we all know. So it's a very insidious virus, and uh, uh, the, the research community and the companies that are working on therapies are trying to attack every stage. But despite being attacked, even for example, if you say uh, a therapy is successful in uh, killing the virus by preventing it from uh, replicating, the fact still remains that there is a viral copy sitting in the dormant cell, continuously throwing out copies uh, that are getting killed by the new therapy, but the dormant virus is not taken out. So as long as the dormant virus is not taken out, it's going to attempt to replicate, and if one of its replication uh, mutation uh, is able to evade the therapy, then you have a new strain of HIV virus which is resistant to a, a particular therapy that the patient was using. So the patient has to now shift to a different therapy. So all these complications happen, and if anybody is irresponsible or due to some constraints are off their ART for a period of time, then it further complicates the uh, addressing this therapy as a whole for everyone. That is my personal opinion. I want you to understand, industry is trying very, very hard to come up with a solution, and there is no conspiracy in place to keep milking HIV uh, patients for money with just keeping art in play. There are companies seriously progressing, but the virus itself is very difficult uh, to handle. The HIV viral protein that is primarily responsible for down-regulating MH1C, that is major histocompatibility complex class 1 molecules on the surface of infected cells, is called as NEF, negative factor. NEF in short. NEF is the one of the early viral proteins produced after HIV infection and plays a crucial role in the virus's ability to evade the uh, immune system. And friends, I'm going to talk to you about NEF today because I want you to understand that it's not a simple virus like a common cold. Even common cold is able to evade us. That's why we need to have different vaccines every year. So this virus is not a simple virus. What it does is, once it gets into a cell, it prevents the cell from marking itself for destruction because cells generally have MHC1 expression on their surface so that killer T cells can, killer cells, uh, natural killer cells can come and uh, kill those cells. What HIV does is that as soon as it infects a cell, it releases NEF. NEF has several functions one of which is a down-regulation of MHC1 molecules on the surface of infected cells. It achieves this by interacting with cellular proteins involved in the trafficking and expression of MHC1 molecules. As a result of NF's activity, fewer MHC1 molecules are displayed on the surface of the infected cells. The down-regulation of MHC1 by NEF serves several purposes for the virus. The first is evasion of cytotoxic T cells or CD8 T cells. Cytotoxic uh, T cells play a crucial role in recognizing and destroying infected cells by interacting with MHC1 molecules presenting viral peptides. 
by by reducing the presence of MHC1 on the cell surface, NEF diminishes the ability of cytotoxic T cells to detect and target infected cells. And that's the reason why HIV infected cells live longer and uh, they cannot mark themselves for destruction and the human immune system is unable to kill them. And the escape from immune surveillance is another aspect of um, the MH1C. De decreased MH1C expression makes it more challenging for the immune system to recognize HIV infected cells, allowing the virus to establish a persistent infection. And protection of uninfected neighboring cells is also a function of MHC1. By down-regulating MHC1, a NEF can uh, also protect uninfected neighboring cells from immune attack. Uh, since the immune system might mistakenly target uninfected cells displaying viral proteins. So this is the nefarious um, uh, operation of HIV virus as soon as it enters the cell. So it's very devious and it's very, very difficult to kill this virus. But we have made a lot of progress. It's worth noting that NEF's down regulation of MHC1 is just one of several immune evasion strategies employed by HIV. The virus has developed various mechanisms to evade immune uh, detection and establishing chronic uh, inf infection uh, in the subjects, contributing to the ongoing challenges in developing effective treatments and vaccines against HIV. So I would like to emphasize that industry and research community is working hard to find a solution to this menace called HIV. The virus is so insidious that it is making us learn more and more about our own cell biology and genomics in order to um, search for a cure. I think we are very, very close to getting a cure. One should have a cure uh, latest by 2027, and beyond that, we may have more cures. As I look ahead into the future, I think if the cure is specific to HIV-1, then other strains that use different mechanism uh, and evasion strategies may start to dominate. So it's going to be a long battle. What needs to happen is also a change in the behavior of all of us uh, so that we are able to be very safe and avoid creating new infections. Because as long as new infections keep happening, uh, HIV is going to have opp opportunities to mutate and create new and newer and newer strains that can evade existing therapies and cause more problems. So friends, I would leave you with this message that please do not despair. Hope is around the corner. Many people get infected with HIV for no fault of their own. Some get infected because of a misadventure of some sort. But at the end of the day, everybody is in the same boat. All of human race is in the same boat. As long as even 1% or 0.1% of human race is infected by HIV, every human is vulnerable. And therefore, it's a joint battle for the entire humanity to eradicate HIV. And the cure is coming because we now have genomic sequencing machines. We have sequenced the entire human genome. We have the capability to sequence the genome of every plant, crop, insect and organism on planet Earth. And we are doing that and we are learning more and more about them. And friends, in the next video, I'm going to talk about a new uh, discovery uh, by Indian scientists about something called a circular RNA uh, in HIV, which is instrumental in its replication. That's a video that is coming shortly. So stay tuned for that. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. And it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's my turn now to make a request of you. Uh, if you have been watching our videos for a while and have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and help us uh, cross 5,000 subscribers. It will be great. And if you've already been a subscriber, it's time for you to take your engagement with the channel to the next level. And you can do it in two different ways. The first is you could become a Patreon. The link is in the description. Become a Patreon and enjoy some special benefits of being a Patreon member of this channel. And also you have the other option, which is just scroll down. Press the join button in your screen and become a member of our channel. And your becoming a member of our channel or a Patreon will help provide the vital resources that are needed to keep this channel and the HIV program going. So I look forward to seeing more members in the channel and also more Patreons. With that, I would like to end this video here. Bye for now.